Now it's time to look at the resolution or the resolvance of a diffraction grating. Now I like this uh, from Dwight Schrute here from uh, the office in a wrong size does not depend on the pixel. It depends on screen resolution, screen size, and pixel size. It's all about resolution, right? So let's, let's talk about this. Um, resolution itself of a diffraction grating. Remember, that's something where uh, there's a whole bunch of slits for light to pass through. We had this diffraction grating equation before. Um, we can now look at how well it can resolve here. We're going to call this thing the resolvance. This idea here, we're going to call it resolvance. It's just this term. Now, what we're going to do then is take a look at this and, and see what we can do with it. We have this uh, equation here. It's given in your data booklet. So let's just maybe take a look at each of the pieces here, and we'll see how we can figure it out here. Lambda is the wavelength being investigated, so that would be in meters. Then we've got a delta lambda, which is the smallest possible resolvable wavelength difference. In fact, this is often uh, the key thing you want to find here. This is a, you know, the difference in wavelengths that you could actually tell apart. Now we have this thing called diffraction order. Remember, that could be, um, you know, m equals, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 right? You can have anything. And n is just the total number of slits being illuminated. So this is just, a, it's just a number being illuminated. So let's say you have like 50 slits being illuminated. Fine, n is 50. Do you notice, by the way, that m and n, they don't have any units? So that's why the unit of r, then, there's no units for it. You see that? You can also see it here. You have wavelength, which is in meters, divided by another wavelength, which is also in meters. Meters over meters, no units needed. So although this equation, maybe it sounds a little bit scary, that the resolution of a diffraction grating, oh God, what do I do? Just calm down and look at this equation and you'll be fine. Let me show you an example. You'll see how this is the kind of thing that they ask you on an IB exam here. So we have a beam of light at different wavelengths here. Okay, so this is not monochromatic. It's, you know, lots of different wavelengths here. It's incident on a diffraction grating with 600 lines per millimeter. And that diffraction grating is 20 millimeters wide. We'll see what to do about that in a second. We have the average wavelength of the beam is 620 nanometers. So we're going to use that for lambda, by the way. Uh, that's times 10 to the minus 9, right? That's a nanometer, as I remember them. Calculate the least difference in wavelength that can be resolved by this in the second order. What does second order mean? Let's just go back. Actually, let's just write down this equation. Uh, or, can I be clever and copy it? Let's see if this works. Copying and pasting is my friend. Yes. So let's just use this equation here. We don't really need the resolvance itself. Do you notice? We don't really need to find R. They could have asked, what's the resolvance? Fine. It's this over this. Do you notice here, though, what we really need to do, we're going to work on, let's just work on this right here. So instead of R, we don't really care about what R is, we have this equation right here, right? Mn. We want the smallest difference in wavelength. That's this delta lambda. So if I just rearrange then I have delta lambda, let's see, I put this up at the top, that means the mn can come down at the bottom, so it's going to be lambda over mn. This is what I'm going to need to do. I know my wavelength, it's 620 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, so that's nice. I know my order is 2, so I have 2 times n. Here's the problem, what's n? Uh-oh, I need this. I need to know, remember what this is, n is the number of slits being illuminated. So let's look at carefully what they gave us here. We have a diffraction grating. Let's see, now we have 600 lines. I'm going to actually just put the units like this, lines per millimeter. You could convert this to meters, but watch carefully. I don't think you have to. If you know it's this wide, can you see that I, if I multiplied by this number 20 millimeters, do you notice what would happen? I would end up canceling out the millimeters and getting an answer of lines, which is what I wanted for n in the first place. So that's why I can say 6 times 2, which is 12, and then add 1, 2, 3 zeros to it. So I know that n equals 12,000. I have 12,000 lines illuminated here. So finally, then, I can do the final answer here. So I have delta lambda. That's my smallest difference in wavelength. It's just going to be the 620 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. Divide that by um, 2 times 12,000, which is 24,000. And there's no units on those, so that's why my answer will be in meters, which is good news. It's supposed to be. So let's see here. 620 times 10 to the minus 9. Divide that by 24,000. And what do we get? Oops, I need to make sure I put brackets or else I'm going to mess it all up. 
There we go. I end up with an answer of, oh, it's really small, isn't it? 2.58 times 10 to the minus 11 meters. This is actually my, um, this is, this is a very, very small number, isn't it? I mean, this is tiny, tiny, tiny. That's good news. That's because the diffraction grading is pretty accurate. It's not accurate. It's pretty good tool to use. Now let's just take a look at how many significant figures I can use if I use two like this. So I can say um, 2.6, let's just say, because I'm using two here. So 2.6 times 10 to the minus 11 meters. This will be my smallest wavelength that I can actually image here. There we go. So I hope you see that, although it seemed kind of crazy, uh, we can completely do this, right? The trick was to not panic, first of all, when you see this uh, equation, or when you see this kind of situation happening. Again, just try to break it down and decode it into what you really need. Again, this equation isn't actually so bad, is it? It's just R is uh, lambda over delta lambda equals mn. You just have to know what each of the variables means, don't you? I really think of it, it's almost like, you know, wearing a decoder ring. You sort of have to look at the question, sort of decode it. What do I have? What am I looking for? What equation will I use? And in these kinds of situations, they're actually pretty easy. They're actually not so bad at all. So that is resolvents. Yahoo!